This is Pastor Roy Olson coming to you from my office in Apavia Ministries in uh, Romania. God bless you and good morning and I bring a message of hope and faith to you. And that is regarding the coming of the Lord. Uh, we hear very often that Jesus is coming soon, Jesus is coming soon, and they have as well a list of things that have to happen before he can come. So how can they say he can come any day and yet have a list of things that have to happen before he comes? There's another uh, school of thought that says, you know, there shall be this this rapture that we shall all kind of uh, disappear, the captain of the airline is taken and the airline crashes or, or things of that nature or the clothes are left behind and the spirit is caught up to meet with the Lord. And uh, that's a very popular um, theme. I bring to you another, another thought. The Bible speaks about Christ being formed in you. It speaks about a Christ being formed in you and he comes, he comes, Christ comes to be glorified in the saints and admired in them that believe. It also says that when he shall appear or be manifested, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. And of course another one very popular and uh, equally true is that uh, we shall do the things that he did and greater things shall we do. And the question is, have, have we seen that yet? And so here's, here's the thought. There are those throughout history, including the Apostle Paul himself, who have lived the ultimate truth of the verse, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. We've read the stories of uh, uh, Madame Guillaume and uh, Martha Wing Robinson, who have had incredible, not normal, or should we say not uh, well-known experiences where they have sensed a transformation, where they no longer lived unto themselves, by themselves, but they were directed and empowered by Christ himself living in them and through them. In fact, if you ever get a chance, I suggest, I recommend reading those biographies and taking those scriptures and, and seeing those type of scriptures fulfilled in the lives of people makes one wonder whether we are truly looking in the right place or believing correctly. Now, I've heard many people say, you know, they strive to have Christ-like character, and that's a noble aspiration. But would it not be better to be more scriptural and say that I'm looking for Christ to be formed in me? Because if Christ is formed in me, then all his attributes are also being formed in me. I'm not speaking about divinity. I'm speaking about children of God, a child of God. After all, does not John say that, um, that, um, oh, what does he say now? Help me now, Roy. Uh, in, in John, uh, as, as many as believe in him, to them gave he the right or the authority to become a child of God. Is that the same thing as having eternal life? 
Is that the same thing as being born again? Or does that refer to something beyond those two? I suggest to you that the, the cross is not the end of the gospel. The cross is the means to the end or the goal of the gospel. What, what, what should we expect from being believers in Jesus Christ? Well, we talk about, well, having everlasting life, you know. Well, the Bible is very clear that he that believes in the Lord Jesus Christ some people call it saving faith. Well, the Bible does not say that. It says, he who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. How much? How great? Saving faith. Well, I think the Bible says a grain of mustard seed is enough. Just take that spark. He that believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. The Bible also speaks about being born again. And uh, twice in the New Testament. But never does it say, use the word term born again and the eternal life in the same verse. Uh, what it does say is except a man be born again, he cannot even see the kingdom of God. Well, what is the kingdom of God? It's righteousness, peace, and joy. And so once you're born again, you experience the righteousness, peace, and joy. Doesn't mean you've entered into the kingdom. It means you've seen it, you've tasted it, you've sampled it, you know what's available. But then there goes something else about not being servants or heirs, but being children of God, child of God. What does that mean? Uh, is that something else? Well, what Paul seems to describe it uh, as, uh, as something beyond, something for which we yearn. I think Paul even uh, describes something like this, I count not myself to apprehend, have apprehended, but I press towards the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And does not he also write that Christ in you, that is the hope of glory. What? Christ being formed in us. In other words, it's not trying to be good or, or, or trying to ascend to a higher place. No, it's a, something about abdicating ourselves, making room for, yielding to, making place for, desiring deeply, yearning desperately for Christ to be formed in us. And as Christ is formed in us, then all the attributes are there. It's like buying a car. You don't buy a steering wheel and wheels and a dashboard and seats. No, you buy a car. And all these pieces, known and unknown, are included in the package. Well, rather than pray for or seek for the different attributes, how about seeking for himself and allowing himself, Jesus Christ himself, to be formed in us, and when he comes, all those things come along. Well, there's a lot more to be said about this, but this is, should we say, lesson 101 on what is the end goal of the gospel. Thanks for listening. This is your pastor friend, Roy Olson, coming to you from Apavia Ministries in Romania. Goodbye.